I'm going to speak to how tobacco industry has used litigation to threaten tobacco health or tobacco control policies or derail or delay or frustrate in a way intimidate government or law enforcers efforts to promote the tobacco control act um article 5.3 of the world health organization framework convention on tobacco control advises governments that domesticate the framework to guard against or make it their duty to protect public health policies from commercial and other vested interests of the tobacco industry. In the Ugandan instance, we have seen uh, in the three cases that have where government has been dragged to court, government in all these cases has defended the public health arguments, has used the public health arguments to promote tobacco control. It has defended its right to protect its citizens and this of course was seen in the victory. The case in point is in the constitutional petition case against the Tobacco Control Act. The government was the lead defender of the Tobacco Control Act well, it participated alongside the civil society and it also allowed to coordinate and agree to promote public health arguments. One of those arguments that was fronted by the lead um, attorney general lawyer for government, he said while rejecting the injunction application from the tobacco industry that would have otherwise halted the implementation of the Tobacco Control Act. He said, and I paraphrase, that government has all it takes to compensate the tobacco industry in the event they made any losses. But he challenged the tobacco industry. It does not have money enough to compensate for any life that would be lost. And that was Khan Sobatanda as he was then. Then in 2017, the tobacco industry took yet again government to court, this time around in the East African Court of Justice. And here, in a way, they were challenging government's role, government's policing role, to protect its citizens through making enabling law. This particular scenario, government in 2017 had, in a way, proposed to come up with fiscal measures, taxation measures that would have otherwise made cigarettes very expensive on the Ugandan market. This strategy, of course, um, this strategy, of course, was opposed by civil society because civil society indeed, uh, civil society agrees that Article Six of the WHO FCTC advises governments on how best to tax tobacco products with the intention of making them more expensive but also making them less accessible to young people because of the prices or the tax administration issues that are involved therein. This, if government had proceeded with it, it would have taken government an extra mile to collect more revenue streams, more domestic revenue mobilization from these seen products, the cigarettes, which are only known to create externalities which pollute the environment, including harming, harming citizens because it harms the environment within which they live. It affects the quality of air and the cigarette tabs are also known to affect the water cycle. And that translates to basic needed products becoming very expensive for the common person. So in this case, government's ability to use tax measures were in a way curtailed or frustrated or derived. However, interestingly, government came up with the 2020 amendment and to the Tobacco Control Act, which defined the various tobacco, the, 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 the tobacco leaf with an intention of having it taxed for more because it was raised from the zero point from the 0 0.2 to 0 0.8 US dollars 
So any tobacco leaf that is consigned for export is subjected to that 0.8 US dollars. In other words, government in its amendment process in defending public health policies, in this case tax measures, it increased taxing tobacco products. And the 2021 amendment, of course, also listed the various types of tobacco leaf that is consigned for export. Also of interest is when government defended the tobacco control regulations of 2019. In this case, government the attorney, through the Attorney General because the Minister for Health had been sued with the Attorney General that they had not consulted the tobacco industry to implement or rather to participate in the development of the tobacco control regulations. Government put up a spirited fight and civil society joined in to co-defend the tobacco control regulations. The intention or among other strategies that are in the tobacco control regulations are the graphic health warnings. Which graphic health warnings are on uh, the alternative for non-compliance in the event the banned non-display at point of sale is abused. That these tobacco products, the cigarette packs, are supposed to have the text but also the graphic health warnings which show what happens to a consumer who partakes of tobacco products. So litigation in these three instances, government has been very quick to defend the public health um, policies. And these public health policies, of course, include um, tobacco advertising promotion and sponsorship, which is banned. The other is uh, sale of tobacco products at the point of sale. And the other is graphic health warnings, which notify any member in the public who is non-suspecting of what harm is from the tobacco products if they got exposed. In all these instances, government has emerged winner. Government deserves to be applauded. Government deserves to be encouraged to take on its role serious, which is in its section 19, that government is required to defend public health policies from commercial and other vested interests of the tobacco industry. Whenever, gov whenever the tobacco industry has used litigation to threaten government, government has come bold and defended public health. And that is why the Tobacco Control Act of 2015 as amended in 2020 and 2021 still exists in, uh, intact as the framers of the law intended. The same is with the Tobacco Control Act regulations of 2019 they too were threatened with litigation and government emerged winner. The same are still intact. The graphic health warnings, which are supposed to be placed on cigarette packs, were defended. The, um, the coloring and all the other sections in the tobacco control regulations are still intact. That is why we could join with um, the world to celebrate the Global Tobacco Industry Index, which shows Uganda's efforts for standing up against the tobacco industry, standing up against litigation, which litigation would ultimately have threatened or failed tobacco control and its legislative efforts in Uganda. Thank you very much. I am Talibita Moses. I owe you and I say all this for God and my country. The media has played an amazing role in ensuring that Uganda performs well uh, in the implementation of uh, the Tobacco Control Act. To start with, the media has been a watchdog. They have been uh, causing and calling for accountability from the tobacco industry and the tobacco control advocates. We have shared stories, we have created awareness, and this is one of the success factors that we have enabled the public to know about the tobacco control and the different policies around it. The media is one of those main stakeholders in tobacco control. Thank you very much. My name is uh, Dr. Tadeo Soke from Mkumba University, and uh, I'm glad to be speaking today 
about um, the Uganda's country team team that is the tobacco industry monitoring team how our activities have uh, helped in monitoring and uh, highlighting specifically at co 513 at co 513 um, of the framework conversion on uh, tobacco control which is basically on the protection of public policies on protection of public policies with respect to tobacco control from commercial and other vested interests of the tobacco industry. So basically, as the Uganda team, uh, our team is comprised of academics and represent the academia from Kumba University. Uh, we are also uh, having colleagues from the media. We are having colleagues from um, other civil societies. And uh, we are also having members uh, from the legal fraternity so basically our work in relation to the world world health organization framework conversion tobacco control um at co 53 uh, we have been working on several aspects in regard to monitoring the industry whereby academics we have been working on issues considering undermining science then um, the other advocates have been working on lobbying for decision makers then uh, front groups uh, we have been having the media helping us to highlight some of these activities which we have been doing we have been having colleagues working on the litigation and we have been having colleagues working on tobacco advertisement uh, tobacco advertisement and sponsorship and also colleagues who are helping us to put these media clips together otherwise as a country team uh, the tobacco industry monitoring team uganda uh, we have registered a lot of streets as most of you know yeah thank you so much as we, and as we look forward to launching of the tobacco industry index i think as team uganda we have really done well yeah thank you so much my name is dr tadeo Rusoke from kumba university yeah, yes. I work with Uganda National Health Consumers Organization as a program officer in charge of tobacco control. In line with the Article 5.3, which is protecting public health interests from commercial and other vested tobacco industry in interest, we have done a number of operations supporting government enforcement agencies that will include NEMA, KCCA and Uganda Police Force to ensure that the tobacco control law is respected but also complied with. So we have done a number of operations, raids, night raids, but also we have done inspections at different points of sale, looking at supermarkets, the shops, the kiosks, the bars and the operations that we have done. We have done targeting the notorious bars where banned products or items are sold. So we have confiscated them and the, we, the suspects plus the exhibits are with police, some are with police, but also the suspects have been taken to court and we have followed the court process to ensure that uh, the culprits get some punishment and uh, that uh, also a big message is sent out to the general public so that they learn from the raids that we have done so that they are not consuming or we do not have these prohibited items or banned items come into the country. Therefore, in line with the Article 5.3, which is protecting public health, we call upon government and other enforcement agencies to ensure that uh, the Tobacco Control Act 2015 and its regulations are respected, they are complied with, that anybody that is caught off on the wrong side of the law, it is brought the person is dealt with and that for us the advocates we want to see justice.